Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, this week has kind of just been a week at my desk, it is kind of messy. Um, it is Thursday today, and for this week's like small talking segment, I think I want to talk about like the progress in my notebook. It is August 31st today, so my book is technically finished, which is kind of cool. Also kind of intimidating, I guess. <laughs> um, I ordered the first official batch of booklets yesterday. Um, which is really exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> um, for now, I've just ordered more combined books and I might put them up for sale in the UK for like next week's video. Um, and then I'll order the planner booklets and the commonplace booklets separate, um, probably for September or October. October, because today's the 31st of August, okay. Um, it would be good if I knew where I was in place and time, but I don't. <laughs> um, I have almost filled this. I have like five pages left. I've been using these pages a little bit sparingly for the last couple of weeks or the last week just because I knew that I would probably run out before the new books arrived. So I'm trying to save them so I have somewhere to write still. Um, but that being said, it is like 90% filled and I want to show you because I think it's kind of cool, I guess. Um, obviously, my cover is just a standard traveler's notebook cover. I added these stickers, it's the same ones I used to use to label my field notes books when they were finished. Um, three sevens for luck. Um, this is a foil transfer sticker made by Midori. Um, I wouldn't really recommend applying it to a traveller's notebook cover. I've never really used foil transfers before. They seem really easy and it wasn't hard, but I did have a hard time getting it to adhere to the cover. I think that's probably to do with the material rather than anything else um but there are patches where it's just not come up especially here <laughs> um and then like i did damage my cover or like not damage it but like mark it a lot trying to make it stick so i don't know if i would recommend it it really depends how fussy you are after i did it i was so annoyed with the mess i put it in a drawer for like three days so do with that what you will <laughs> um now i don't mind so much obviously a big part of travelers covers is that they get marked up with time and you really like wear them in and they take on like a different patina and they're really just loved i guess um like that garfield meme the the loved i don't know the loved garfield meme <laughs> where it gets really messed up um this one is also midori travelers notebook it's a nameplate um they come with like a piece of double-sided tape to stick them on and it's so sticky. I was thinking about stitching mine to give it some extra support, but it's not even remotely shifting, so I recommend them. <laughs> um, I was going to put a label in here. We have a Dymo label maker um, in the household, but we can't find it. I thought I had seen it recently, but we, we can't find it, so I don't know where it's gone. Um, that's pending at some point. I'll put a label in there. Um, I don't really want to buy a new label maker in case we find the old one because that's always how this stuff goes, but it does look kind of silly empty. Um, the charm obviously is the same one that I made for my week's book way back at like the beginning of the year, I guess, or maybe it was even last year now. Um, I love it still. It has a little skull, a little Mary, and then like a little red gem. Um, big fan. <laughs> so... That's all that's on my cover. Um, on the inside, I have that one spooky picture that I always talk about loving. Um, I printed it from my phone using an Instax printer, so it's on Instax Fujifilm paper. Um, just for something to put in there because I didn't have anything else and I don't want it to be super crowded yet. Um, I kind of put it in there, I guess, as like a temporary measure or just like as something to have there <laughs> so that it wasn't empty, but um, my favorite picture. In the back, I have printed pictures for sticking in, just a few, not many, um, a movie poster and some some other miscellaneous bits, not a lot. In the back, I just have like a grid notebook, it's empty, I'm not using it, I just wanted something so that it didn't only have one book in it. When I get my new book, I'll probably put this one in the back and then put my new one in the front, just because it's nice to have more than one book, I guess. I probably don't think I'll have more than two at a time. Um, I don't really care for having like a big chunky, chunky book. Um, but it is nice for it to have company, I guess. <laughs> um, the paperclip is the same ones I made previously as well. I just threaded a pearl, like, how would you call it? Uh, like a charm? Yeah, a pearl charm onto a paperclip. Super easy DIY. 
Um, again, I just think they look cute, especially when the book is closed and you can look at it from the top or the sides. I just think the paper clips are really pretty with the pearls. Um, it's just, it's just pretty. Okay, so then the book. <laughs> um, I didn't fill this in. I changed this slightly for the new books, but I'll show that to you next week. Um, next week will be a journal with me video as the normal loop follows. Um, and I'll talk about sort of like the layout, I guess, more in depth then because they have made some small changes to the pages. Mostly what I've done is just lighten all of these really dark lines. I've dropped the opacity by like 50%, so they're like grey rather than black. Um, just because on some of the pages I think it's maybe a bit overwhelming, um, and I think the lighter lines make it all look sort of like a bit more finished. Um, yeah, I didn't fill this in <laughs> yet. I guess I, I guess I will, um, but I haven't done that yet. Um, these pages I haven't used because it's own, only in this book for one month, so this was not an oversight. I knew that I probably wouldn't use it, but because this was my test book, um, I just didn't organise something else to go here. For the next book, what I've done is take away this month, and I've made this a key so there's no numbers, and you can put your like sticker system there, your index dots, <laughs> um, or just whatever your key is. And then I have three months because I think it's nice to have at least a little future log to see. Um, sometimes I reference that. Otherwise, you could cover you could cover this up, I guess, and use it for something else. You could use it for tracking, I guess. Maybe that would have been smarter. Um, maybe for the other planner books, I'll leave it empty, and I won't have it the same month. I should have thought about that. Um, okay, you live and you learn. <laughs> um, in the calendar, I filled this up today quite a bit. I had a little bit. You might have seen it in yesterday's footage where I had written in a couple of days. Honestly, until today, I wasn't really feeling this, but then I spent a little time this afternoon um, looking at like my week's book and my Hobonichi cousin, um, and I was kind of like, okay. I liked that in some of my previous calendars, I had some small stickers going on. I don't want to go back to when I was in like my A6 Hobonichi and like my first week's book, where it was like a lot of stickers to keep up with. But adding a couple is very easy to manage, and I don't want to spend hours decorating. But a couple is fine, so I added a couple, <laughs> um, and I added a bit more text. Um, and obviously now my, my mood tracker, it's not necessarily a mood tracker, but a symptom tracker. I finished filling that out, so that looks good, and I added some text sort of just reviewing the month at the bottom, kind of just writing about what I want to change for next month, um, and I like it. Um, I think the one thing I'll do next month, maybe, is put the numbers for the dates in the bottom so that I can write on the full line at the top. Um, I probably could, but I always worry about it looking crowded. Um, I don't know. I haven't had to write my own dates in a long time, so that is something that I'm like coming to terms with, I guess. Um, but an undated book is so nice because there's a lot less pressure, and then you can also buy them in bulk and just date them, and it's, it's nice. Um, all of that to say, I really liked how this turned out in the end. I'm excited now to use it again next month because I didn't change anything. Just made the lines lighter, which will also be nice because then I can write across the grid like I used to in Hobonichi, I think. Um, so, big fan. The one thing I forgot to do was mark the month. That's what this is for up here, is that you can mark the month that you're writing in. So I should have marked the 8, but I forgot. Um, but I like it. I think it's cool. Um, my sleep log worked great. Obviously, I took away the text for this, so it just says tracking, and then you can write what you're tracking. Um, I also took these two lines out, but I'll draw them back in for myself, and obviously if you want to draw them in, you can. I think I also took this text away, so again, it's a very open spread. What I did keep was the numbers, because <laughs> um, I hate writing them, and I imagine other people might also hate writing them, especially when you're trying to keep them neat and consistent in size going all the way down a page. It just sucks sometimes. Um, but this is the same sleep vlog I was using in all my Filofaxes, so this works for me, it still worked. Um, I'm glad I have it. The one thing I forgot to do was to add an extra line here for the text, which I actually didn't forget to do for my commonplace book, so I don't know how I forgot to do it for this one, if you see what I mean. I gave an extra gap so that there was room to write, and I just, I don't know how I, how that became an oversight, but it was. Um, again, I did forget to mark these. I should probably do that, I guess, but it doesn't look bad unmarked. I just forgot. Um, the monthly review page, I guess, could either be in advance of the month or after the fact. I haven't used it yet, but I will <laughs> for the sake of completing the book and also because I'm running out of space and I need somewhere to write in the next couple of days. 
um i'll fill that in but you could put like your goals or tracking again this is another space you could use for tracking um or you could write down some plans i guess um or things to do um or you could put pictures for like <laughs> the vibe you want for the month i guess i used to do that in my old roystrom notebooks um I think it's just nice to have a cover page and also it makes my pagination work out which is the real reason it's there <laughs> so um moving on to the weeks my only blank week is the first week of august because i was waiting for this book to arrive and i lost the information i'd been filling out my days on printer paper and i misplaced them i think i probably recycled them by accident at some point um so that's my only empty week which is you know womp womp <laughs> um this one i also didn't have the book yet i think i got it for this week but i had this information still so i backfilled this um obviously i've been tracking the weather with those stamps i did get some of the jewel ended stamps like you guys recommended and they are a lot more pigmented so thank you for that now they're almost too pigmented though um now i'm kind of scared of them because they're quite aggressive <laughs> so i wish there was something in the middle but i will persevere with the darker ones um obviously up here the month the week number focuses and then watching reading listening and like a self-care activity really cool i like all of that it's working um i guess the whole book is working because i designed it for myself to make it work for myself <laughs> like i very much based it around my personal needs um so i hope this is interesting <laughs> but it's it is working um i keep some more text about the week on these sides in these bits it's just my tasks um i am like assigning rest as well and tracking migraines um i started underlining some more text and that's the nice thing always about five millimeter squares is that it gives you more room to underline um which was the biggest thing that i was kind of relieved about when i left hobonichi was that because the grids are that bit smaller i feel like everything is so much more like packed in and i find it harder to read back on i find it less legible when you're trying to look for something specific like my my writing is not very legible anyway but when it has that much more room to breathe i feel like it is easier <laughs> so um yeah i am also a big fan of underlining things rather than highlighting things um so i am i am just glad that i gave myself that much more room to be able to do that um all the weeks look the same <laughs> i think next month i'll probably add some small stickers into the weeks like i did for the calendar probably just like a couple on each page to add some color and to break up the text um nothing too exciting i think i'll probably stick to using one color for the weather as well i've done that this week and then uh, the gray tracking i guess with the stickers might look nice um i don't really like to have like a lot of color um i am kind of moody so so i don't i don't love the the sort of like the messiness i guess of the of the different colors but also i guess it just doesn't help that some of the pigmentation in the markers was so bad um but i think the gray is nice so i'll keep using the gray um this is this week my pen was running out really badly here and i didn't notice because i was writing in the dark so that's annoying but again not the end of the world um and the paper is actually really growing on me it reminds me a bit of field notes but i guess like a bit a bit harder um i like it i like it a lot i guess the easiest way to describe the texture and feel of the books is if you took a field notes book and you stretched it out into this shape that's kind of how it feels texture wise um and i don't hate that to be honest with you i quite like it sometimes i think the hobonichi paper is too soft and it makes me nervous to use it but there's something almost like scrapbooky or sketchbooky about these papers and at first I wasn't sure I liked that and now I think maybe I really like it so there you go um my index slash contents page as I said previously I think I wasn't sure if I would use this and I haven't what I have done for the next set of books that will arrive next week is I've taken the text out and I just made it a blank page someone recommended that in the comments so that people could use it how they want um and I did that <laughs> so there you go um I kept this logo and I kept this line at the top but I took all the text and stuff away. So if you wanted to, you could make like a cover page for your commonplace book, or you could just put some some other stuff there, whatever you want. Um, but I made it more versatile, I guess. Um, and then moving into my commonplace, I won't talk in depth about it because we've all been there. <laughs> we know <laughs> we've all been there. I think I've I've probably have lost all the words for the ability to talk about my commonplace at this point. Same index system as always, like brain drain uh commonplace so like copy text autistic sherlock holmes uh miscellaneous self-care stuff you know all of it um it's the same <laughs> my margin always 
Um, and again, I use the margin to elaborate on the text or to add extra thoughts, or I use it to put other small text in. Um, I just like the page to be broken up. I think it makes it so much easier to use. It's something that's always made a lot of instinctual sense to me. Um, so, um, small pictures. I print these by doing that thing on the printer where you open like 20 images at once and then you go to print them all together and then you do from the, the layout in your printing settings and you can select to have 16 per page. That's how I print them at this size. All printers are different, <laughs> so I don't know how to explain it to people, but wherever your layout settings are, if you can drop down and choose how many images on a page, that's how I do it. Um, 16 is the smallest my printer will do, and that's how I print pictures for small books, it's always just 16. That's how I print my book covers and my movie covers as well. Um, everything is just printed on 16, apart from my Polaroid photos, which I do on 9, I think. Um, so just slightly bigger. Um, added some more stickers in. Again, earlier when I was working in this, there were less stickers and it was just stuff stuck in. I've gone back in, added some lines, um, added some stickers, just to try and pull things together a bit more because I was looking through this a couple of days ago and I was thinking like my Hobonichi cousin looked so tidy. <laughs> Not only was it tidy, but I thought it was like pretty to look back on. And I was looking at this book and I was like, she's not pretty. How do I make it look better? Um, and I realized that it's just the use of small stickers to pull everything together and sort of filling up those empty gaps. I added some text on these places. Um, just filling in those little gaps makes everything look so much better. Um, so that, that's what I worked out for myself. Um, I just think it's nice to fill in all the gaps and to have little bits to look back on. And I think I'm going to stay in this book, the combined book, because it's so exciting to have like a whole month to look back on. And it feels like a time capsule. <laughs> um, this page is my only page of true regret. I just don't think I should have stacked these photos like this. I think three was a mistake. I think crossing over into the header was a mistake. Um, I like broke my own formatting rules and it bothers me. Um, I then tried to write up here and it looked bad so I erased it, but it didn't erase very well. <laughs> um, so this is my only regret. Um, so I won't do that again. I'll just spread them out a bit more like I normally would. I'm not even sure why I stacked them. I guess because they fit like almost perfectly and I thought that was cool, but the regret. Um, I don't recommend it. I do however recommend marathoning the first three screen movies. I did have a good time, so. The only other thing I regret is the glue stick I'm still using because everything, I swear to God, I've peeled, I've stuck this back down like six times and it still keeps peeling back up. I'm using that Japanese brand called Glue, and this is meant to be their anti-wrinkle glue, so it's meant to be really nice, and I feel like it was really nice for a while. Um, now I have to stick stuff back down constantly, um, and it's just- I've stuck these all down like 16 times each, it's really annoying. <laughs> um, I might go back to double-sided tape. Obviously now that I'm using a book a month, the bulk isn't an issue anymore, which is a really freeing thought. <laughs> Um, so I might go back to double-sided tape just because this is doing my head in. Every time I turn a page I can hear it cracking back up and I'm like, why? Um, either that or I maybe just need to use some better glue again. Um, I might get a prick stick rather than, rather than this Japanese glue because I don't know what they're making it out of, but it does kind of suck, so. Um, I'm tracking, this is St. Anthony, <laughs> ignore that, that's his jaw, but we won't talk about that. I'm tracking the books I'm reading um, and also obviously the films I'm watching and that's been really fun just to sort of keep track of everything. I haven't finished this yet but it is really good. It's about memory and loss and childhood homes. Um, it's a lot but I, I think it's kind of a cathartic read for me personally so investigate at your own risk. Um, my Polaroid photos, again I do that thing where I print it with a certain number of images on a page and I choose nine. Um, and I make these using that app Unfold, which I think I've talked about before. Um, I like it. I think it's fun. This was about my ghosters. <laughs> um, no regrets there. Again, this is something I started doing a lot more of in my Hobonichi Cousin, and so I tried to make sure I brought that back in again. Um, and adding in some small stickers, um, and I like it a lot. And then I watched the new Evil Dead movie. It was really fun, actually. I liked it. You could watch it without having any previous knowledge. Obviously, my household has previous knowledge because we're horror buffs, but um, 
it was the kind of fun movie where you could definitely stick it on for some friends at Halloween and it would just be a good silly time where everyone is like screaming and covering their faces because it's so silly and horrific, um, that kind of thing. So, you know, it's a solid, a solid three out of five, I guess, like not very original, but it does play into a lot of fun tropes, that kind of thing. We had a good time, an unashamedly good time, so there you go. Um, again, and some small stickers, I added these in after and I think it does just help. Um, I rewatched the the new Batman. <laughs> I saw this in the cinema when it came out last year. I really like it. It's weirdly a comfort movie for me, so I rewatched it. I originally printed this picture in color, and then I hated how it looked, so I went back and I took it off. Which thanks to the crap glue for that. But I took it off, and then I put a black and white one down instead, and I like it a lot more. So I think that's something I need to remember: is that I like my colors to be minimal, um, which pretends to be shocked, but there you go. Um, small sticker, adding in some lines again. And then this is some stuff I'm working on at the moment. I'm making little like archive labels for books and some small printable habit trackers. Um, so surprise, I guess. This is what I meant last week about leaking my own spoilers by accident. But I really like them. I think they're really cute. Um, they're really little, but I think it's a good size for these kinds of books. And obviously you can just mark them or stamp them and it's nice. I wrote on this one, which was a music tracker for like songs, um, and there's just enough room to write on them, so I think it's okay if you have small writing. Um, if you have bigger writing or you want them bigger, I guess you could just print them bigger and it'll probably be fine. I see people do that with the stickers, so should be good. I'm having fun making them, um, and I think they look really cute. And then that's it. I have like five pages. There's 30 pages in each book. Um, is this stuck? Um, oh, it's because, do you know why it's stuck? Because I printed my own, printed my own. I took the staples out and I uh, saddle stitched the book instead because the staples were annoying me. I don't know if you can see that, but I saddle stitched it and then I used nail glue to glue the knot because it kept unraveling and it was too short because my thread snapped. And I think the nail glue has caught the inside of the, yep, see? Um... Anyway, that's my mistake, <laughs> so you can ignore that. Um, I don't regret sewing it though, saddle stitching it, it worked really well. I might do it for my next one too, I did make a bit of a mess of it so we won't look too closely. Um, but I guess I just wanted to come on today and catch you up because my whole week has just been at my desk really. Um, tomorrow I might do some sewing again, so it really is just like the attic archives, a week at my desk. Um, that's my progress. I'm really excited. My next book will come next week, A Batch of Them. I'm excited to start again. I think it's just cool that it's a whole snapshot of a month. Like, I can flip through and I can be like, okay, I was having sleep issues. And then, um, I put in that Joan Didion article that I always put. And then I was working on my zine. And, like, I was drinking coffee again. And I was watching Scream and reading books. And then post arrived <laughs> and like you know like i can just see it at a glance like what happened in the month and the stuff i was working on and i just think that's so exciting because i think it's really in the spirit of my old a6 notebooks that i kept for so many years for like six or seven years and i filled them every three months and then when i looked back at them in the beginning of this year i think i could really see what had happened and like as i was looking at them i was remembering the stuff that was going on um, and I think I'm managing to recapture that sort of like way of working in these books. Like I think it, it's been a really good breakthrough for me. I think the experimentation this year, as I said before, was necessary. But this is such a nice development to hopefully conclude it all. So still resisting the Hobonichi lineup so far. I do keep looking at that Black Gingham book, the paper book. But I don't need it <laughs> because I have this and it's nice. Um, and this is working for me really well. So... I'm excited. I, I will do this again next month and show it to you all again next month. Obviously you see it throughout, but I just I just thought I would show you how it's looking now that it's almost almost done. Um these pages obviously I'm trying to keep carefully blank for the time being. I've got like one page a day until my new books come and I can write three or four pages if I really want to. So um it should be easier next month because I started this one two weeks into the month. I'll have more time. But there we go. That's how it's looking. Um, I have no idea what's happening in the video this week, so good luck to you all. <laughs> um, hopefully some sewing or something like that tomorrow. Maybe I'll walk at some point. I um, hope this was interesting. Obviously next week when I do the journal with me, I'll show the new books to you more in depth and I'll list them for UK people if you want to see. Um, but yeah.